morning. It is September 13th, 2022. This is the day that the Lord hath made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I still have my four grandkids, so at any moment, somebody could show up and sit down next to me. So I am not sure, but that's what life is all about. You, All those who know us know that Pastor Matt and I, we're who we are. Life is real. We don't pretend that everything is perfect. We live life like Jesus did. You know, I'm sure that when they gathered together in many places, you had crying babies. You had situations going on all around. But that doesn't matter. That shouldn't distract us from being able to focus on God. You see, today's thought for me was heart check. What is your biggest heart desire? Because whatever that is, that's what we're going to tend to put all our efforts into. When there's something that you really want, you don't let other things distract you. You just work toward that. Well, our heart's desire should be number one to love the Lord, to please the Lord. Knowing and understanding that He loves us so much more than we can comprehend. There is no one on this earth that loves you more than God Almighty. It says in John 3.16, we hear it so often, but with those words are so true. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He came into the world to bring salvation into the world. He didn't come to condemn it. But instead to be that ultimate sacrifice so our sins can be forgiven. So that we could have the peace and joy that comes from being in that right relationship with the God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You know, this past week, people have been amazed about the, the string of satellites up in the air, in, up in the sky. I thought, wow, those are just some satellites. And people are, oh, look, how cool. How cool to realize that the God that created all these things a God that gave man the ability to make those satellites to be able to launch them up loves you dearly he's the one who gives man the abilities to do all the things that we do animals don't make and do the things that we do yes there is some amazing animals but none are created in the image of God like we are none have the promise of salvation. None does the word say that God is preparing a place for them to dwell with him in glory. Only hey, to us people. Hi, my love. You can sit right there. Here you go. Let me help you. <laughs> okay, you're going to help me? Yeah. Okay, sit down. Come on. There we go. So, this is the only girl granddaughter in the family four boys and one girl so and here's my other come here we can bring the chair up here you guys know Logan Logan's been a part of the morning devotions before he's mm, my other sweetheart <laughs> but so a heart check and we can be assured in our heart Knowing that even when things go rough, even when it may seem like God is asking something of you that you don't think you can do, God will supply whatever you need to do it, whether it be a skill that for a moment he gives you. I cannot tell you how many times there'll be something that I'm put into the situation that I need to do that I have no idea how to do it, and I'll just say, Lord, I don't know how to do this. It's up to you. And God somehow, put the phone down. Somehow, God gives me the ability to do that thing that 
he has required for me to do at that moment. And you need to know that. Don't worry about whether you feel you've got the talent for that or not, because God will give you what you need. Here in this part, in Luke 22, it says, Now the feast of the unleavened bread drew near, which is called Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him. For they feared the people. They were looking and trying to figure out how they were going to kill Jesus. But he was so popular with the people, they were trying to figure out how to do this in a different way. And it says, and I thought that this was interesting. I don't think I ever noticed this before. Then, verse 3, Then Satan entered Judas, surnamed Iscariot, who was numbered among the twelve. You know, if you are spirit-filled, if you've got... No, 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 don't do that, my love. Okay? You can go back inside and watch VeggieTales if you want to. Okay, but you can't make noise. Okay, please. Thank you. If you don't have the Spirit of God within you, inside of you, then Satan can enter in. And this is what we read here of Judas. Apparently Judas was following what was popular at the time. And we know that God had a purpose for Judas. He was the one that was assigned for this, you could pretty much say. God knew from the beginning. Jesus knew that he was the one who was going to deceive him. That, not, excuse me, not deceive him. Um, oh, I can't think of the word. I cannot think of the word. He was going to be the one that was going to go against him. Um, against him. Against him, yeah. So, it it's not something that took Jesus by surprise, but I thought that, that was interesting. And Satan entered Judas. Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat. Hold on. So they said to him, where do you want us to prepare? And he said to them, behold, when you enter the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house which he enters. Then you shall say to the master of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large furnished upper room and there make ready. So they went and found it just as he said to them and they prepared the Passover. And when the hour had come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. You know, the Lord is waiting. Waiting for that day when he returns. And at that time, we will feast with him. What a day of rejoicing that will be. God is patiently waiting for the right time that he has prepared to return and to have that fellowship with him again. And I thought it was interesting that when all this is happening, Jesus talks to us and he says, He took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup of supper, saying, This is the cup in my, excuse me, This is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan had asked for you, that he may sift you as wheat. I got this. But I have prepared. I got this. Shh, 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 we're, we're talking. But he has, I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen the brethren. I was thinking about what we talked about yesterday, the, the fellowship and praying for one another. You know, Jesus prayed. He knew that Peter was going to mess up. He knows that sometimes we're going to mess up. But what did he say? Peter. Str he's, yes. uh -huh. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you returned to me. In other words, he knew, Peter, you're going to mess up, but you're going to come back to me. Strengthen your brethren. You see, we mess up in the body of Christ. When we get together as brothers and sisters in Christ, we remind each other that we're going to mess up sometimes. 
but we pray for one another we forgive one another and we learn from that lesson from that mistake and we strengthen one another you know I thought about how Hitler tried to destroy the Jewish people and instead it gave him more perseverance more umph to say you know what we are the people of God we're going to stand you know it said that some of them sang as they were getting killed they did not forsake the promises of God they stood strong we have Israel today an example to us of God's faithfulness so you need to set your heart and mind and make up your mind that no matter what comes your way no matter what difficult situations may come that you're going to stay strong in the Lord you know that he loves you and that he is a merciful God full of grace and love towards you I thought of David and Goliath even David's brothers made fun of him they just mocked him they were always looking down at him but he didn't let those offenses stop him he kept a praise song in his heart the disciples became stronger and bolder we see that happening today in other countries where persecution of Christians is really strong when they come past that persecution it's stronger when they martyr one you have more that give their lives to the Lord and make up their minds we're gonna stand strong for Christ this is what Psalms 42 says I'm just gonna read some of the verses as the deer pants for water brooks so pants my soul for you O God my soul thirsts for God for the living God bless you when shall I come and appear before God this is the heart of someone who's having a hard time listen to these next verses my tears have been my food day and night while they continually say to me where is your God the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night he shall be with me a prayer to the God of my life I will say to God my rock why have you forgotten me why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy as with breaking of my bones my enemies reproach me while they say to me all day long where is your God why are you cast down O oh my soul why are you disquieted within me he's telling himself why are you being all oh, down in the dumps he then he says hoping God he reminds himself to hope in God for I shall yet praise him the help of my countenance and my God check your heart have you allowed it to waver if so come back just as the Lord was waiting for Peter to come back Peter? and here we have we read you know in the Bible the books that he's written out of those experiences the devil goes around seeking whom he may, can devour he is looking he is there roaring but our God is so much bigger our God is great and awesome and he dearly loves you so when you do your heart check if you see that your heart is wavering bring it back like David says and say my hope is in God for I shall yet praise him the help of my countenance and my God so keep a praise song in your heart rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice we'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. many blessings to all of you and now to those watching online our church family pray for Roseanne she is taking her citizenship exam today that God bless her I look forward to celebrating with her uh, there's a lot of situations that different people have but we know that we win in Christ I can do all things who got with God who strengthens me then rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice can you say that rejoice rejoice yes <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m.